we start to cruise in slowly, there's no surge, it was fine, and then wham, a set came through and it just ripped us around and we got sucked in, sucked into the cave. Previously on Delos, Lisa and Liz take their first breaths underwater, and we continue to be blown away by the beauty of Ascension Island. It was the day of saying goodbye to Ascension, so we landed Maggie for the last time on the pier to do our last provisioning and everything else that needed to be done before heading southwest. The boys also offered Craig and Ellen a helping hand to get their boat out of the water, because they are leaving Ascension on the next day as well. Back on the Argonaut and unfortunately um, Craig and Ellen are leaving the island because of all the business that's, that's dropped off from the airport not being open and they're not being tourists, so we have to take their boat out of the water today. The, the game plan is to kind of bring it up closer to the dock that we normally get off at. A crane is going to drop down. Craig has already got the straps on. And uh, yeah, we just hook it onto the crane and, and the driver is supposed to watch the swells and in between the swells he's going to take the, <laughs> take the pressure up on the crane and lift it out of the water. So the swells come down but there's still a swell running. Look at down here. So it's still kind of gnarly. I guess there's the potential of the boat bashing up against the wall, but I'm pretty sure the crane driver will hopefully get the arm out long enough to get it away from the wall when we're down there. So it's that crane over there is the one, the big one. Yeah. So I that's going to pull up, pull the boat out and then put it on a flatbed truck with a cradle. So how do you feel, you guys? It's always nerve-wracking, especially for the crane driver. It's the same guy who almost got pulled in last time. <laughs> the same the guy boat. that dropped the boat. Oh. It's still going to be tricky there with the wind. Yeah. Craig just going to go down and check the lines one last time. All was going smoothly, except the crane operator didn't extend the arm far enough out. So when we hooked up to the sling, it pulled us right into the wall. We held up from the bottom but it took a while for him to realize what was going on, so I used a fishing float as a makeshift fender. It was a real battle to keep her from getting smashed on the rocks. feeling guys ready for a drink <laughs> <laughs> ready for a drink did that go as smoothly as you'd hoped ah uh, could have been worse huh could have been worse so with the sea conditions as they are and very little as you can see on the pier very little guys to help so yeah if it wasn't for you guys it wouldn't have been possible today but could have been, could have been worse yeah a little bit uh, of scratches on the bow but a couple of scratches there a bit of gel coat nobody got hurt nobody got hurt no one got hurt a bit of float coat fix it up I got yeah. plenty of float coat work to do when I get back anyway yeah. glad that's over glad this is over but very sad because then every time we will come out with clients we have to do it again twice well, lesson learned friend Miotis on your days <laughs> <laughs> so they can assist you we else work else. for real cheap too that's amazing for fish. That's pretty good. Fish and drink. Yeah. 
Good. We're, we're jogging on. Jogging on. We're jogging Goodbye, on. Goodbye, internet. Goodbye, internet. Everything is scheduled as much as it can be. We've sent our last messages. Send, send, send. Goodbye. I don't even think our iridium's working, so we're not <laughs> going to be in contact with anybody for weeks. Jolly, jolly, jolly. I have to do some last provisioning. One store on Ascension Island, and it's actually pretty well stocked. It's the only store. It's the only store. Let's go check it out. We anticipated the passage to be about three weeks with no pit stops along the way. Dallas was still stocked up pretty well from Cape Town, but six hungry salty sailors can eat a lot of fresh fruit and veggies. We're at the shop. Everyone's really excited to, uh, to be leaving, so I feel like everyone's just frantically going around the shop trying to get uh, everything they can to go. Oh, God, it just feels so good. I can't wait. Are you excited, Brady? I'm really excited. This is the worst idea to shop when you're hungry. Oh, no, no. I'm thinking about doing stuff for snacks now. Oh, is a bean salad making you hungry? Yeah, I just want to open up a can right now. What do you want to do a guess on how much it's going to be? Uh, 130 pounds. 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, 141. 141? 300. 300. 235. 235. How about you guys? Do you want to make a guess? <laughs> I can see. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go 250 then. 250. Drum roll, the total was... Twenty-eight. Oh, awesome. So, so what did bad. you say? Two hundred twenty-five. Uh, so I said one forty-one. Yeah, you were closer. Oh, good job, Alex. Blue. I'm excited. It's going to be one of the best sales Dallas has ever had. We're going to have twenty knots right on the beam for like two weeks, mate. Mm. Magnum. <laughs> Magnum. Magnum. Closing thoughts on Ascension Island as we spend our last few minutes here. The ice cream is pretty good. <laughs> the light here is epic. Yeah, all in all, I mean, this island is very exclusive. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever come back. I think I will actually. Yeah? For some weird reason, I think I will come back here one day. Closing thoughts on Ascension. Wow. <laughs> it's been awesome and we really spent it three full weeks and we saw some crazy shit. And I'm very happy we came here. Ascension is like a big magnet, and I'm definitely drawn back to it. <laughs> it's a crazy volcanic island full of beauty. Beauty in the ocean. I like it. The island that we're touching down on in Brazil has 600 waterfalls on it. I don't even know how that's possible. And you know what that means? That means some really good waterfall bikini shots. <laughs> The chapter of Ascension draws to a conclusion for the Delos crew. The adventure stretches out before them like a ray of sunshine. We don't know where we are going. Well, we do because we're going to Brazil. And uh, there's, there's something strange about leaving. You get like a sense of crazy freedom. It's like skipping out of school and hoping not to get caught. But yeah, this is awesome. Really excited. So, see you on the other side. You want to stay yeah. another month? Yeah. Okay, then I'll pick you up. Okay. Bye. 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 See you later. I'm staying. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. diving and if we can manage it and conditions are favorable we're gonna stay the night and today's Thursday so if we stay tonight we can't start the passage on a Friday so we're gonna actually stay two nights which is cool because I definitely want to spend some more time in the water here before we go I'm kind of bummed to be leaving this place because it's so epic and it's gonna be really hard to get to for the next several years at least um, but I'm happy for it because I think it needs to do some healing and people basically have to stay away for that to happen so I think it's good the airport's broken right now actually 
compass just did something really weird, Alex. I don't know what it is about this island, but there's some weird magnetic zone. So we were just on autopilot back there, and the boat was cruising along, and all of a sudden it did a full left turn. I was just wondering what And then did a full right turn, and then another full left turn. And then the GPS stopped working at the same time. So I don't know all these space antennas or something are... And our Iridium doesn't work here, and neither does the other boats. So, there's some weird electrical activity, I think. All the way to the left now. All the way to the right now. Ah. Has it ever done this before? No, I've never seen it. The only time it did this is after I fixed it and put it back in, and I had the wires backwards. And steering from now on. <laughs> Alright. With a dysfunctional autopilot, we are going to build rock to spend two more days diving before we are heading towards Brazil. We have been to Bird Rock before, but we definitely felt that we can't leave this place without seeing more of this amazing underwater world. And listen myself, we were pretty excited to get back in the water as well, for more beginner dives. So we tied Delos to a buoy, and underwater we go. You always feel a little bit nervous getting in the water with sharks. Like, right, what do you think? It doesn't matter what kind of sharks they are. You're going into their territory the same as if you go into like an area with lions or tigers or something. Be calm and make sure the sharks know that you're not there to harm them and you're definitely not something they want to eat. It didn't take long for us to make friends with one of the many bold Trivalis. This one in particular was super keen to stick with us for the entire dive. And dive after dive, he would always join back up with us to show us the way, chase after Mr. Brady, and keep us safe from all the sharks. when they go below the water. I know it's irrational, because I've heard what you should do with the sharks and blah, 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 I know all that. And I know that they're experienced and, and they're not stupid. Well, it's a whole different world down there, but I, I still worry. It's always important to be aware of sharks and to know that you are in their territory and not vice versa. The whole crew has learned a lot about their behavior lately, so we more and more enjoy diving and swimming with them. They are amazing creatures and mostly misunderstood by us human beings. The crew did one dive after another, but not all of them were chill and smooth. We just went on our fifth dive here at Bird Island and 
they've been really mellow and chill, and this one was a little bit more hectic. We cruised around a different side of the island than we've been diving the last the last few times. There, there's a just the edge of the island underwater is just a sheer drop off ledge, and so it's really gorgeous. So we get over just on the other side and we find this narrow cave tunnel thing, sort of. We start to cruise in slowly, there's no surge, it was fine. And it kind of just was like this going in. So we cruise in and then wham, a set came through and it just ripped us around and we got sucked in, sucked into the cave. So that was actually the most scared I've ever been underwater, but luckily Brian was close enough to me to come back into the cave a bit and he was able to grab me and get his feet on the wall and kind of push me back out again. And then I managed to kind of get around one of the corners but I just was holding the camera in one hand and with the other hand just holding on to the, the side of the side of the wall wherever I could grab and just holding on and getting pulled back so gnarly. But good lesson, you know, to just remember to always dive safe and um, not push it because things can happen so fast. You know, diving so peaceful and and chill most of the time, and then just like that, it's it's not anymore. And you know, you whack your head or something like that. And In the end, luckily everybody was safe and not badly injured. It's a real bad idea to go into. Did you go in it? We got sucked into it. That was man. scary, man. <laughs> I was like swimming in behind Alex. And then I look back and she just like turns around and gets sucked backwards. I was like, ah. oh shit. That was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me underwater to me. Seriously. <laughs> Not man. good. And I had the camera, so I was just holding on with one hand. Just like, ah, getting like sucked in. What would have happened if you just got stuck completely in and got trapped? Probably would have got bashed against the wall. Yeah, you just would have gotten bashed around in there. Until you... And then we're the sitting there in my... Because they, they weren't bleeding at first, they were like green. Yeah, and then we're like sitting... green underwater, you know? For our safety stop. And I was like, F now I'm like bleeding and there's sharks around. <laughs> <laughs> so sketch. Well, let's not do that again. So, good lesson learned today. I got some battle wounds from it. 
gashy. It's all good. It could definitely be way worse, so I'm just really happy to be back in hotel right now. So Lisa and Lisbeth is going down again for their second beginner's dive. <laughs> and they is gonna go down and look at some fishies. Are you excited for this? I am. Um, I'm a little nervous. Scared, yeah. You should ever relax and breathe. That's it. Not through the nose, through the mouth. You can't breathe through the nose because you have a mask on. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going down there. <laughs> I would do a good spit list, not not like a yes. tongue can't rub. Spit. Can I have Brady spit can't then? Spit. Why can't you? I've just never spat before. I don't spit. Yeah, I don't. So like Excuse me. What did you say? She I've swallows. never spat before. Lisa's first giant thread. One, two, three. three. <laughs> Dallas Dive School. We got we're on top of our shit. Regulators in. Start breathing. There you go. Easy. Lisa. 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 <laughs> she gone. <laughs> she gone. She gone. Straight to the bottom. Take me, Brian. Take me down, please. Hold me. <laughs> I honestly can't express my feelings. Being able to dive just for the second time in my entire life in such a remote place was purely overwhelming. Got to the rocks and then Brian just held my hand and he didn't let go for the entire duration. He just <laughs> held my hand. And then we just saw a shark and then Lisa was next to me and I just grabbed Lisa's hand. I was like, Ugh! we were she holding put, hands for a photo. It's so, so hard. Like, <laughs> and I was like, okay. Jackie, Jackie. And then I saw. There are no words to express my gratitude to the whole crew for giving Liz and me the opportunity to learn and to experience the underwater life. Divers! Again. <sighs> uh, I nearly cried several times in the water. I'm like, damn it! This is hooked. Yeah, you got me. You got me right where I belong. You got the addiction. Yeah. Good night's sleep. Although the slams back there are intense. I know, I heard Like it slams so much that our whole bed shakes. Yeah, oh. I was thinking that. Yeah. What is that, bro? Uh, loss of water flow. Whoa. Oh, no. Either the impeller went or the thing could be full of bird feathers. Ooh. What does this mean, bro? I don't know. I just want a cup of tea. Instead of going diving straight away, there was a solid MacGyver mission needed. Started up the generator this morning. Yachting. Failed. And uh, the alarm it gave was raw water alarm, which means it's probably the impeller. And that sucks because it's the second one that's happened. Wait a minute, it's the second time this happened? Hmm, this sounds familiar to me. But let's watch a little bit more. And the thing only has a hundred 
spent 17 hours on it and they're supposed to last like way, way, way longer than that. But I'm just gonna change it again. We only have one left. So I'm motivated to fix it. Yeah, that just scrambled up in there. It's fucked, man. I don't know why it would do that. It just disintegrated. Yeah. Usually the little pieces of the ends will break off. It's gotta be a problem with, with salt water getting put into there, right? So now we gotta count all the pieces. Count all the pieces? Didn't we do this before? No? Can you remember now? Because if any of these pieces are left in the engine, then they block up the cooling circuit, like the heat exchanger. The same thing happened after 20 hours of generator running. It doesn't make any sense. But remember, didn't we count them all? At least the last time, yeah. last time we did it in Namibia, yeah, like we, 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 did we counted time. them and yeah. we found all the pieces, right? Yeah. And we laid them out and we counted them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I remember doing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure and, as well. And then I went down and I was like, okay, there's one more yeah, and I dug it out of the heating station. I, I think it was me or you. Hmm. After 20 hours of running, for some reason, look at this. That's the impeller. I don't know if you can see it, but there's one, two, three, four, five blades missing. I'll try and clean those out. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. I hope that's all of them. I don't see any others. And that was the little hint we gave you guys only a few weeks ago. That the Finding the Blades game wasn't over yet. Welcome to the finale in Ascension. Brady saw another piece. I don't know if you can see it, but it's hidden. It's like in way there. Way in there. In there? Yeah, wow. see that black piece? Yeah, and I found maybe, maybe I missed that one the first time this happened. Can you see it in there? Which would cause this to happen. Wow. Can you get that out of there? So I think we'll just put the our last impeller in and hope that it makes us to Brazil. And for all the people out there who might have thought that Brian installed the impeller wrong the last time because some blades were bent in the wrong direction, here is wow. how it works. Oh. And then if you go the other way, it just sort of changes, right? Whoa. <laughs> you guys are easily I'll tell you what. <laughs> How's it going, Brian? I think that's about it. Yeah? It's all back together. It's a little hot down here. It's really hot. It's not, I like when you're sweaty in the bedroom. Yeah. Look at that belly. Yeah. Oh, look at that sexy belly. Yeah. Beautiful day today. It is. A lot of birds. <laughs> I like birds. They're pretty nice. I can't believe we had that one inside the boat yesterday. Oh my gosh. Oh, what just happened? Oh, there's a bird, a bird just in the boat. Oh, there's a little bird. Oh, I think he's hurt himself. Oh. You gotta, you gotta cover him with a towel. Yeah. Okay, get a towel, Brian. You, you're a handy man. Brian's a bird. Or a bucket. Brian's uh, a bird. No, a, a towel. Just get a towel. You think? <laughs> He's oh, grabbing Brian, grabbing with a towel. Oh, yeah. Brady's a bird person. Gentle. Oh. You gotta be really He's quick. not dead. <laughs> Is he dead? No. no. He's playing dead. I got him, I got him, I got him. Get him free, let him free, let him free. I got him. Fly away, birdie. Up. Yeah, let's just let him rest. Yeah, yeah, let's just let him sit there. Dad, don't blast him, Brian. <laughs> don't blast him, Brian. <laughs> Stop blasting. He'll be fine. Thank you. That was very gentle. Thank Good you job, Brian. for rescuing the bird. I hope he's okay. I'm sure he, he is. He was pretty dull, like he was, I think he hit his head pretty bad. I think they pretend to be dead at that point. Oh yeah, that could have been as well. Yeah. What's going on? So, um, accidentally got boiling hot water over my hand. Um, I went to fill up my water bottle at the same time Alex was pouring hot water in the sink. And we've shared the sink many times, but then a, a wave hit the back of the boat and just went. 
and the water went all over my hand and it, it really fucking hurts right now. Yeah, it's like I've got fire all in here and it just, it just hurts to do that, just to touch my skin. Now both of our hands are injured. Yeah, my sisters. Don't touch me with that cream. <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> Antibacterial cream for the short term treatment of wounds and minor burns. Hmm. Does it feel better? No, it hasn't done anything. I feel nothing. It's still fucking canes. Canes. After such a hectic morning, it was finally time to calm down and to breathe underwater. And then at the end of our last dive, we saw something pretty unique. This determined little turtle was swimming in the strong current with just three flippers. We had heard we might see him around here, and it was a pretty sweet way to end our time in the water. Strip cleaning out an eel's mouth. <laughs> the eel would go oh, like this, open his mouth, and a strip crawled on his head and started cleaning his teeth for him. We so found the turtle! Yay. Oh, it's so cute! The three legged turtle, Lisa. Three legged one! Three legged turtle. Three flipper turtle. Blue like, juice. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's like his little nubbin was moving. From down below, we headed straight into the sky to explore bird rock one last time from the air. Holy bananas! I just wanted to talk about this spot and how incredibly unique it is. It just feels so wild in a way, you know, you have this massive rock with thousands of birds that are just like going crazy above us. Unspoiled part of the world for sure, a little gem. It's a really unique spot and I feel super lucky that we've been able to spend as much time here as we have. I would definitely say that this is one of the most amazing dive spots I've ever been to. We can dive from the boat, which is a huge thing as well. We don't have to pack everything in Maggie and it's just amazing and then when you drop in the water, it's actually really good visibility and it's just so many trevallis. And sharks cruising around in the distance.
and turtles and small fish and macro stuff and it's just been really sunny today and beautiful and I'm really happy. <laughs> So that was wonderful, I think. Two mind-blowing days at Bird Rock and a pretty decent way to finish off the Ascension experience, I'd say. But now it's finally time to get ready to set sail. Nice. Next step on Delos, we set sail from Ascension on our 2300 nautical mile passage to Brazil and some issues with the autopilot lead us to fall in love with hand steering to the Southern Cross. It's really cool to just steer directly by the stars. Two minute noodles. I don't like the number five. Okay. What? Okay. She doesn't like the number five. This is quite heavy, Lisa. Oh, should I carry it? No, not like this. Not like this. Don't fall off, crazy sharks in the water. Some powerful thighs you've got on you, Kaza. No, I've been working out. I felt safe. Safe between a woman's legs. Real safe. And the most important part to remember here on Bird Island is when you're looking up. Close your mouth. Otherwise, you the chances are pretty high that you're getting bird poop in your mouth, and nobody has got time for that. Uh uh. Close your mouth. I got a bird poop. I found it right there. Oh, I see. It's a big piece of shit. Let me see you again. Oh, it's a big piece of poop. Look at that bird shit on her back. Splash. <laughs> Brazil. Oye, como va? What are you doing? I'm trying to find the hole in my nip to see if I were to ever lactate where it would come from. I don't think men have those. They don't. Yeah, they have to. What are you grooming, Blue? This barber shop. My walrus. Make my mask leak. With the kitchen scissors, I like it. 